seems legit. Hello my legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Karis bag by Kaya Papaya. Um, it is super fun. I actually really like this bag. I'm thinking it might end up being my next bag. Um, so anyway, it comes with like this cute little magnet over part. And then you've also got a zipper top so that you can close the bag like that as well. And then inside, we've got a zipper pocket and some slip pockets on the other wall. I did the bag feet. Um, and it doesn't use a whole lot of hardware, really. I use magnetic uh, large rivet magnets because they are my favorite. And I like that it has the little accent there. Uh, but you can choose to just use a normal one. It's just got the two rectangle rings, so it doesn't require all that much hardware. Two zipper pulls, and I put on some bag feet because I thought it would look cute. So if you would like to see how I've done this, please stay tuned. Alrighty, let's start with our strap, like we always do. I am using um, a vinyl. This is an awesome textured fleck vinyl. I think I've got a little bit left on the website. Uh, I will be getting more, hopefully soon. I love this stuff. Um, so we're just going to put double-sided tape down the centre. This is 12 mil or half inch double-sided tape. You can get it in a bunch of different thicknesses. This one is Express It from Spotlight. Comes in 50 meter rolls. Um, I like buying big rolls just because I do make so many bags uh, that I do go through so much double-sided tape. Then we're just going to squish it. We're going to bring it together in the center and then push down and we're going to make sure that that join is for the most part hidden. We don't want to have a big gape between each side. Um, I'm just going to move along. So bring it to the center, push it down. You get into like a bit of a habit. So I'm squishing it together with this hand and then pressing it down with the other one. And you'll also notice I'm not taking off all of the double-sided tape. And the reason for that is every time I do it, I manage to stick it to my table because it's too long and too much exposed. And then pop it in the bin. We always want to um, have a clean area. I know I say this a lot lately, but it really is important. Clear space helps clear mind, which is better for focus. All right, join is done. Now you can sew it from either side. I am going to sew it from, I'm actually gonna sew the edges first. I'm gonna do four lines of stitching. Lifting a little bit here. Right, then we're going to backstitch and then I'm going to do the other side. Now I chose to do matching purple thread, uh, but you could also do black um, or a totally contrasting colour like the rainbow because the fabric is quite rainbow. If I had been doing rainbow hardware, I probably would have done rainbow thread just because I think it would have looked cool. So now that we've done the two edges, we still need to do the middle. But what we're going to do is we're instead going to have like four lines of stitching. So, from here, I'm going to line the edge of my presser foot up with the stitch line that I did. I'm using my hand. Uh, like I would these magnets to kind of guide it. Now, I do sell those magnets. You could just use magnets instead. And backstitch. So now this is, I think it's quite pretty. You obviously don't have to do this many stitches, but we've now got four just looks nice I think and then it's stuck down those middle bits so it won't gate open we just need to cut all the jump stitches off the end over here all right 
strap is done. Now let's go on to, I've got all of the pieces here, but I've just realized I didn't block out the sizes of them. So this is the centerpiece. I'm going to need that again soon for the magnetic snap placement. And then I want the side pieces, which are here. So you, the pattern actually comes with both halves written on them, uh, but you can just cut the one and then flip it over to mirror the shapes. So we've got two that side and two this side. So we're going to grab one middle and then one of these sides. And you want to put the middle in the middle like this. Now we can chain stitch these because we're doing the front and the back the same. So we can line these up and then how big is the seam allowance? So we're gonna stitch and back stitch to lock it in. I'm gonna go all the way up, stitch and back stitch. And then we're gonna grab the other halves and do the same thing again. So again, line it up. If you need to add some clips, stitch, back stitch, and I'm gonna chop off that first one. And then grab the other side and stitch the other side on. Now I will be top stitching the edges down. I'm just not doing it yet because I wanna get all of the stitching joined first. And then I can chain stitch the top stitching. I really do love a good chain stitch. Grab this side, and this side. I like it vinyl up, uh, but you can do it with vinyl side down. Doesn't necessarily matter. I just find I have better control over it this way. Uh, mainly because this vinyl's not super like stretchy. If it was a stretchy vinyl, I'd actually put it on the bottom. Okay, so we have some options here. We can top stitch just to the inside. We can fold these over and top stitch just to the outside. Or if you wanted to, you could actually open this up like so and then top stitch on both sides. Now I think I'm feeling both sides of a top stitch. So I'm gonna go back up to four, which is my top stitch length. Move my clips so I don't knock them and then Stitch, back stitch, because I want to lock everything in. Stitch, flip. I'm going to chop this off because it's in my way now. And I'm going to make sure that this is folded down as well. And then I'm going to top stitch on the vinyl. So I'm just top stitching everywhere, essentially. And it's going to be pretty back stitch. Then I can grab this one and again I'm going to open this out and squish it down. Stitch and back stitch. Make sure it's staying open the whole way. And the reason we're opening it up is to make the seam not so bulky on just one side. If I was to fold that over on one side, that side would be higher. So try and do the other side, your stitches would slip and we don't want that. I'm going to come over to the other side of this, to there, stitch, back stitch. You just need a couple. Well, see, I like it with all the top stitching, especially if you were doing a contrasting colour. That would be amazing. It's also good practice. So again, flatten it out, stitch and back stitch. Again, make sure it's staying flat the whole way. Stitch, back stitch. Chop off this one because it's in my way. We just don't want the added weight unnecessarily. Stitch and back stitch. Last side. I'm going to open this out. Squish it open flat right at the seam. 
What you can actually do if you want to is do a little bit of stitching and then chop this off now if it's getting in your way. So you can chop it off so that the weight's not annoying you earlier on. Again, make sure it's open and flat. Twist, down, stitch, back stitch. Beautiful. Right, so from here, we need to go over to the iron and we're going to iron all of my foam on. I didn't do it yet because we needed to sew this first to stick it to the outside. Um, so now that that's done, let's go heat up the heat press. Okay, so it just beeped to let me know it is now up to the temperature. Now the main reason I'm doing this is because lots of people always ask me what settings I use for my heat press. This is just beeping to say, hey, I'm ready to use. So I set it to 180 degrees and I have the timer set for eight seconds. So then we can just pop this out of the way. I've also got two pieces of baking paper so that I don't damage or get sticky stuff all over my heat press. I've just decided that that's the easiest way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first lot of pieces. Now this does swing all the way around, it's just that there's a wall in the way so I can't get it any further. And then we're just going to lay down the foam in the middle, like so. And then I'm going to put the other layer on top. So this baking paper, don't get the cheap one. The cheap one doesn't work as well. This is like a halfway decent one. Not the home brand, uh, but not also the most expensive. You've got to find like a medium one. The home brand one uh, doesn't have enough coating or whatever, and then it just sticks to everything. So I'm going to swing it back, I'm going to push it down and then do the eight seconds and it beeps to tell me when it's done. So I don't have to actually count out loud or in my head. It beeps, you lift it, you twist it. Uh, always use the handles. I made the mistake once of touching that. It is very, very hot. Alright, lift that out. And then to let them cool, you always want to have them on a flat surface so that they don't curl. Because they're heated, you could actually mold it into a shape, um, which is a problem for another day. I'm going to show you how that can be helpful. Um, so let's do the base. The other reason I wanted to do a video is for the base. I have actually cut base stabilizer and foam. I want both on my base to make sure the base is really kind of sturdy. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the base stabilizer on. And even though this has no glue, I'm still going to put the two layers so that it also won't damage the edge of my vinyl. So down, eight seconds. And you'll notice I'm doing both of these individually. The base stabilizer does take a fair amount of heat to heat the glue up to melt and stick. I'm sure the beeping is probably annoying you, but it means I don't have to count, and I really like that. And then this lays over the top because both sides are sticky, and the other one, only one side was sticky. So I've got base stable on the, and then the foam, which will make the base squishy, and also protect. So if you drop your bag, that little bit of foam is going to help protect whatever's in there when you're dropping it. Um, I always use the beep. In my house I've usually got music on so it's not so loud or in your face but I do always use the beep when using this so that I don't accidentally forget and overheat it and wreck it so this will now be a lot more stable because of the two layers these also should be dry by now so I can pop them I always just set for safety measures I always put glue sides together so if they are still a bit sticky they'll stick to each other and not leave residue on my fabric Good one to think of. Um, next up is this little piece. So again, we always sandwich it. The one time I didn't sandwich it, I can show you what happened. Um, I didn't sandwich it one time and the vinyl that was upside down, so I did it all correctly, actually got so hot and melted to this. So, and the other side's worse. So now we always use two bits of foam for those exact reasons. Uh, so learn from my mistakes, baking paper. Mediocre, doesn't it? Just not the cheapest home brandy one. I don't know why, but it hasn't got the right stuff and everything just sticks to it. It's super annoying. So we're gonna put that on. 
label that over. Now, the other thing you can do with this piece is you could stitch it, turn it, and then put it on. Um, obviously, I'm not doing that, but you could. That is another option. The other thing you'll notice is I have not yet put my little corner accents on and that was deliberate and by design. You can put them on first, but what it's going to do by putting it on second is once I stitch these on, this is also going to stitch down the bag foam. So I haven't put them on yet for that reason. It'll also make them look a little bit kind of puffy and cool. If you don't want that look, you would stitch them on first and then come put your foam. Now we always put foam side up unless it's all fabric. The heat will destroy your vinyl if you do it the other way, but it can be heated from the back. So I always do it this way. On she goes, that just moved. I don't know if you guys saw that. It is why I tend to like this to swing all the way, but this room doesn't allow that. And I've got to work with what I've got. You see how that, even though it's got glue on it, it still comes off, the cheap one's stuck and ripped. It's so not cool. So again, I want to lay it flat. I can move these ones. I have my air conditioner on, so they're probably cooling down quite quickly, which is nice. Uh, and then I'm putting all of these back in the tub as they are cooled. But again, just leave them on a flat surface to cool down. down and eight seconds I have seen on the internet that some people are having issues with these personally I've never had an issue with mine but I also don't leave it on all day so once I'm finished I'm gonna leave it like this so that it cools down quicker um, and I'm just gonna leave this here uh, reposition my camera and then we can start back up again all right, so now we're back. Let's do our accents. I'm going to flip them all over to the wrong side. And we're going to put some double-sided tape on. Uh, you can do it either. You can do either two pieces, one across there, one across there, or just kind of do one diagonally. It depends on what kind of vinyl. If your vinyl's stretchy and going to be obnoxious, put more tape. Uh, but I think this one's going to be just fine with one accent strip like that but again do what you feel works best for you you don't have to copy what i'm doing and different vinyls i treat differently in a perfect world that it all be like the same stretchiness and whatever but that's just not how life works so with my double-sided tape i'm gonna line it up on the edge there And there, push it down, Oop. that didn't even stick, did you see that? I saw that, how rude. Line it up along that edge, if it doesn't want to stick so be it. I can just hold it. Needle down and then I'm just going to run along the edge roughly. The edge doesn't really matter so much because you won't see it. It's just to stop it flapping when we go to build the entirety of the bag. So that, that edge bit doesn't have to be neat. If you need to practice your top stitching, by all means try and make it neat. Uh, but that'll all be lost in a seam, so it's fine. Here's the other one. So see how I've stitched it and it gives it like a little bit of puffiness? That's because I put the foam on second. Uh, foam on first and these on second. If you wanted them to sit perfectly flush and not have that cool kind of puffy effect, just sew on first. It will make a little bit of difference, but I kind of like the look. That's why I do it. Each their own. Some people don't like the look, which is also fine. Needle down, 
Zoom around the edge. Side done. Let's do the next one. I think I got all my hardware. I didn't actually check the instructions. I know they tell them in there, but because I didn't print off that page, and now my print is in a different room, I just find it not so much annoying, but I just I can generally look at a pattern and know what we need anyway. And I have reorganized all of my stuff, which I will show you in a live. We're going to do a walk around my sewing room and stuff, um, which will be this week for anybody that's watching this as I post them. Uh, I'm going to do a live and show you how I've set up my room, some changes I've made, some changes I've had to make that I don't love, you know, all the good stuff. trying to make it I'm just gonna come up the top and sew down. Don't fight on unnecessary things. If it's not top stitching don't worry about it. You can totally go in both directions. That hasn't compromised the bag at all. It just made my life easier. So other side. I've actually cut this pretty. This was a fluke right but I've got both of these here and then these ones are kind of facing the opposite way. I didn't mean to do that. I just made sure there was a dragonfly on each bag, but I really like how that turned out. I fluked it and I fluked it well. Of course you can fussy cut. I just didn't. I will also be doing a matching wallet and then selling this as a set because I like selling sets. I find that sets seem to move quicker on my website than just bags and just wallets. Uh, I haven't decided what wallet I'm going to do yet. It will probably be a strumpet because I like my own pattern. There is nothing wrong with that. It might end up being an MCW because I know a lot of people like that particular type of wallet and obviously make what the consumer likes. Or I might just do something totally random. Who knows? I haven't decided yet. I'll make the whole bag and then see what it's telling me to do. Because, yes, things tell me what to do. Right, so they're done. I like the look that I've done. But again, you don't have to have the puffy bits. You could also, you don't even have to use bag foam if you don't want to. Because all of the, the foam is within the seam allowance, you could actually do this as base stabilizer to just have a really stiff bag. That is also an option. So we need the base and the sides. So see how see how that was a little bit sticky? That is also why I always stick them together. Um let's see. Not that bit. Where's the other bit I'm looking for? This bit. So this bit is to hold my I'm going to do rectangle rings. You can also do D rings and then have clips to attach and unattach the handle. I tend to like doing ta um, handles that unattach usually when it's like an added crossbody strap. Uh, this is just a shoulder strap so I decided that I want it to um, not be detachable because it doesn't need to be. Some bags require like some people just want to use the one handle and not have the two but this bag has only got one handle so I opted to do D-rings so that it stays on pretty much um, and that's just because of that you can then charge less for the bag depending on your demographic and what people want to charge if you're trying to keep your cost down having a non-removable strap eliminates some of your hardware um, and having a one size strap that's not adjustable also eliminates some hardware so just depending on what you're trying to do, I just think this will look nice without the removable strap. Some bags look really cute with the clips, even though you'll never take it off. Well, your oyster and all that jazz. 
different looks. What is this? What is that saying? Different strokes for different folks. Okay. So this is actually decided, uh, designed to be slightly tapered at the top. I like that. I'm also going to just rub this on the edge to make sure that those edges stay folded. And then we'll do the second one. Now, depending on your vinyl, you might just want to do one at a time because if it's not sticking properly, um, and please note it's not always the double sided tape because I use the same brand pretty much all the time, and some vinyls will stick and some will not. It also depends on how thick this is. If this was thinner, it would have a harder time sticking. Um, so I'm using one inch, but you could if you wanted to do three quarter inch, especially if you're going to do D rings and have like the clips for the removable strap. If you're going to do that, the, the 20 mil or three quarter inch D rings would also be super cute. Um, but again, you might want to just do these on the time so that they don't separate on you because it is a thing. All right, I'm going to slide this on. I always like to hide the join. I always get them from the same company and sometimes they have a join and sometimes they don't. And that makes no sense to me, but either way we hide it. So I'm not really too phased. One and two. Now I personally, because these are chunky, I like to go one and a quarter inch down from the edge to where this sits and then fold it over. Because uh, you want enough to be able to actually stitch it down. But that's just what I do. If these were the skinny ones, I would probably just do one inch. And then we need to find the center. So as always, clip the center. Clip the center of the top too, it'll be relevant in a minute. Even though we're not going all the way up there, it'll still be a helpful guide. And center of stuff just always helps. Oh, do we want bag feet on this? The base is probably big enough to do bag feet. Okay, so from here, two options. One, eyeball it. The reason we did this one is so you can see that it's centered. You can just eyeball it and stitch it down. If, however, you're new to bag making, you're like, hell no, am I doing that? Oh, there goes all the bobbins. Good job. Something erasable is what I'm currently after. Um, I don't know where my chalk thing is. My Chaco pen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to measure, because these are one inch, we're going to measure half an inch, draw a line. Perfect. Now this will come off. But what that's done is that's now given me an edge to work with, so that the edge of the vinyl should always match up to the edge of the line that I just drew. Alright. Oh, that one's wrong. That one I did too wide. Hold that thought. This one's correct. So we're still on our beautiful decorative stitch length. We're gonna stitch, we're gonna back stitch. Now the reason that the line is probably a good idea, or double-sided tape and stick it down permanently, is because this tapers. So it might trick you into thinking it's not straight when actually it is. We're going to come up and I get that close, needle down, pivot over. Now, because this is chunky and because my machine is technically not meant to be doing all these things I make it do, I'm actually going to reverse slowly, needle down and then pivot around. So I'm just getting away from here so that it doesn't... Um, mess up my plans to have beautiful stitches. Sometimes, because if I had it done it the other way, and I'll just show you what I mean, if I had it done this, right, see how the foot's really high up? Sometimes it'll skip stitches because there is like a whole gap under here. See that? So by reversing, I knew I could get close enough because of the other side. I went across and then because I reversed, I don't have any skip stitches in here. Uh, so that's just a little tip I don't think I've ever told you. So there's a new one for today. 
Right, let's go and draw the correct line because I did the wrong line a second ago. Um, this is one inch. So from the center, we have to do, draw half of it, and I drew all of it, which is why the other side line is wrong. Much better. Line this up. Stitch, back stitch. Some things are eyeball and some things just not worth it. I think this is one of those things where it doesn't hurt to draw a single line. It doesn't take that much time if you do it correctly. Um, and it will help you. One more. Reverse. I like to reverse slowly. Reversing is a dangerous game, especially on vinyl and thickness. I have gone too fast many a time and snapped the needle. Fun times, fun times. Okay, so now they're on and they look fabulous. And I like that I did the opposite thing and I like that I've still got the dragonfly poking out. Again, that was a fluke. I didn't fussy cut that. Uh, but once you've made one, you could then go ahead and fussy cut it so that you have them exactly where you want them because you know the process. I don't ever try and fussy cut the first one I ever make, uh, generally speaking, because you just, if you've never made it, you're not quite sure of the process and it just doesn't always work out. But anyway, so we're going to do this. Now, because I'm starting to get all the foam, I am going to clip things because uh, I don't want it to shift and the foam will most likely make it shift. And that's just because it's thicker and it's a bit stickier and it's not as fluid as fabric. It's got a little bit more resistance to it. So by having the clips, it just means that things won't move while I'm trying to make them pretty. And pretty is important. So that's one. Let's do the other side as well. Now we can still put bag feet on still having an internal battle with myself if I want them or not. Not sure that it's necessary because it is a smaller bag, but they do look pretty. So this is again is one of those things. Probably looks more professional to put them on, so I think I'm going to. But if you're trying to keep the cost down on a bag, because people can't afford all the glorious things you can do, then leave them on. But before I put them in, I am going to stitch all of this onto the base. So I'm not going to split it half and half this time. I want it all under the base because it helps with the shape. So it's all under there and then I'm just going to top stitch. That middle section there might be a little bit bulky. If you're on a domestic machine and you are indeed worried about how much bulk is going on here, where this is now being sewed under as well. What I can suggest is, I'm not gonna do it because it'll look weird if I don't do it on both, but take some scissors and cut. I'm gonna draw it for you. Cut that out, all of that. Just go, whoosh, cut it out and it'll hold it sit flat out and then your domestic machine can get over it. If I was gonna do it, should've done it to both sides. Don't do it to one side and not the other. It will then potentially uh, go wonky. We don't want one. But that cutting that shape out will have less layers here because depending on what this is fairly thin but fairly firm. Um, so it would depend on what vinyl you're using. But you've also got to remember I've got ba base stabilizer and foam and then all of that. So just depending on what you're doing. You might want to cut it out. That's all I'm saying. Let's get a ruler and a pen. This is just a normal pen. I would like to get a pretty normal pen. I am working on it. So I'm going to go to the edge and I want... Ooh, how far in do I want the feet? There. You can wing this any which way you like. I'm just deciding. And then I want them there and there. I always do four. You can, of course, do five if you so desire. That is now where I want my bag feet. So I'm going to grab my cam press, 
which now live off to the side. It's not a permanent position because what they live on is not super sturdy. Um, but, you know, I'll get there. So I'm going to punch all four holes. And then I'm going to grab the other one. Now this is just my 10mm rivet die that I sell in the section of the dies. Here's one of the things I've done. I went to Spotlight and bought a new storage container because they, all the drawers have this little separation. So now I've got domes and rivets and I find it really helpful. And it also means I can fit more hardware per container. And the other one I didn't waste. So the other one I have moved to the um, laser cutting room and it holds all my laser cutting blanks. So I didn't waste it and get rid of it. I have just repurposed it because I needed the bigger drawers for the bigger stuff. This one has all these size drawers. And what I love about it is it's six wide. So the six different hardware colors go across and then down so it's all perfectly gridded so that I can like organize my stuff. I will show that to you in the live. I'm just chatting about it now because I can. So I'm gonna squish the bag feet down. You always wanna make sure the dome's on top because the rubber helps prevent damage. Right, and now they're all squished in and happy to go. Now if, you, if you're worried that they're not necessarily on, try and rip them off. Right? I know it sounds crazy, but if you can't rip them off, they're not going to fall off while we're turning the bag. It did happen to me once. I didn't push hard enough. The feet did come off. Uh, and trying to reattach them when the bag's completely made is not fun. Been there, done that. Not in a hurry to do it again. Okay. Let's find the center of the base. Because again, I just love the center of things. It's easier than using a measuring tape, to be honest. Love it. Then we need the center of these, which I possibly should have done when they were thinner, but whatever. So I'm just lining up those seams, and then that's the center there. And again, line up the seams, and then that's the center there. So I'm just making the tiniest nick for anyone that's never seen me do this. Like the tiniest amount actually makes quite a big triangle. Okay, right sides together. Grab some clips. Always have the clips facing the gusset side. And for those that watch me all the time and are like, you have a thumb ring now. You've never had one. It's because I designed it on the laser cutter and it will be a video. Not this ring, I'll do a different one. This was my tester. Actually, the tester, I, um, I had the machine, the rotation machine in upside down. So it actually did it mirrored, but it's fine. I learned my lesson. I'm now obsessed with rings and I'm trying to think of other cool stuff to laser engrave on rings just because it's fun. So the one I did for myself, which I'm wearing, says seems legit in a cool font and then has little lines that I was trying to make look like stitch lines all the way around. I was somewhat successful. Anyway, right, so I forgot to explain what I was doing. I always do the center and then work out from the center for the flat part. When we start getting to the curve, we stop and we go and do the opposite end, and then we work down towards the curve. And the reason for this is, actually I can show you if you want. If I just did it from here, and started putting the curve in, there is a fair chance that I will do it incorrectly. Well, there's a little bit of a chance. I'm actually pretty good at curves now, but I still just do it the other way, because if I was to keep going, ah, oh, they come out even anyway. Okay, so I've learned my lesson with the curve thing. but. Mm, if you're new to bag making, if you go from the curve outwards, what you might find is that they become uneven at the end because you have installed the curve incorrectly. Um, and so to prevent that, no, I, I really didn't. I was gonna try and show you that I did it wrong, but apparently I just don't anymore. But that is a practice thing. 
So I will always do the center point, the flat bits, and then come to the opposite end and work down towards the corner to ease it all in to make it look good. Even if that's not what I just did and my showing of the fail failed. Not sure how I feel about that. Part of me is excited that I can do it and the other part of me is like, yeah, but I was trying to show you how to do it wrong. So I don't know. Bring it back my coffin box. I'm gonna do some more of them this year too. The whole point of getting my laser was to use it as part of bag making. And I do have a few ideas this year. Um, I've decided weekends are my time to fiddle with ideas, which is why I've ended up with a ring. We also sew with the gusset facing upwards, as you can see. Right, and then the first thing we want to do is flip it outwards. Now it might not sit perfect because I haven't trimmed the edges, but you want to flip it out and make sure that there's no puckering where you've like folded some fabric. So I'm pushing it out. I'm also happy I did bag feet. Yes, but you want to push it out and make sure that nothing's puckered or stitched incorrectly. Right, the first one's always easier. The second one's a bit harder to do. Um, you want to make sure that the corners are round and that nothing has like folded over and pinched. No, that's not a pinch. Right, so we're all good, but you just want to check. Then you can push it back and we're going to grab the zigzag scissors. And for those new here, I am aware they're called pinking shears. I just like to call them zigzag scissors because they're awesome. These ones are the Fiskars ones. Um, I did try a cheaper pair. I actually got the Semco ones and they wouldn't cut any, they wouldn't cut this at all, so I took them back. I did have Triumph ones for a while, which are also from Spotlight, for those in Australia. They did okay, but they didn't last, they didn't even last a year. So they started off good, but they did get blunt very quickly. And no, I did not ever cut paper with them. It was only ever for this. Uh, these ones seem to be holding out quite well. I can't remember how long I've had them, but it has been a long while. Um, I'm sure there's a way to sharpen them. I just don't know it. I could probably take it to a, sh a knife sharpening guy, I suppose. All right, let's put, actually, before we put it in, because it'll be easy to do now. We want to take this, which I'm going to fold under. I'm just hiding the measurements. You don't actually need to fold it. We want to find the center of the top, which is here. And again, I probably should have done this earlier, but whatever. So we're going to do this, and I'm actually going to clip the piece of paper to the bag. As crazy as that may seem. Then we're going to grab our hole punch, and I'm going to punch through the paper and the bag. Right? That is where we want. The piece. Now you can go down with everything else. That's where I want my hole and I will be using, because I am obsessed and I don't even care, I will be using uh, magnet rivets. Rivet magnets? Whatever. I love these things. So I'm gonna put the female in there. Also, if you are new here, I am a little bit obsessed with my cam press. These are all different dies. Uh, pretty much all of them I do offer on my website. They all do different stuff. I love gadgets. And these are just fun. I also really like rivet magnets. Um, I think they look nice on a wallet because of the, the accent you get on the opposite side. I also use them a lot because they are easy to install. So and one of the main concerns I see with people making the NCW wallet is once they're finished sewing it, the magnets aren't lined up. Whereas I, because I'm using these, install them last and it's never a problem. 
So I'm just going to click that on. You don't have to click it on. You can also push it up into here and then just squish it down. The only downside is the magnetic side takes this the thing with it, but it's in. I didn't have to hurt my hands and I love that. We're going to put the other side in for later. But now that that's in, we can continue on. So again, middle. Always the middle, guys. Work our way out. The other reason I use clips, I tend to not use clips on lining as much because it's more flexible. The foam makes this bag fight you a little bit. I'm also putting the clips on the wrong way because clips should face the gusset and these are not. And the reason for that is because they're easier to pull off while you're sewing. They don't pull off as well the other way. Always have them facing the gusset because you always sew with gusset side up. It's like an unwritten rule that I didn't write. I promise. It wasn't me that created the rule, but I stick by it because it works. Even if you were on a cylinder arm, I would still say gusset side up. That's one half. Let's go to the other half. This is a really cute bag, actually. It's good size. Maybe I'll make this for my next handbag. I've been trying to decide what my next handbag will be. I bought myself some Lord of the Rings fabric and I'm gonna go and do like some ridiculously elaborate bag with it. I can already tell. I've got some green leather, I've got some embroidery designs, like I'm gonna go nuts. I just only have enough to do one, so I really have to pick which one I'm gonna do. Alright, clip done. Looking fabulous. Let's do it. big seam. I know some people feel it's wasteful, but I actually find it a lot easier to sew than a tiny little seam. You're less likely to fall off the edge with a bigger seam than a smaller one. Just ran out of thread. Did you hear that? I heard that. All right, let me do a bobbin. I'll come right back. All right, bobbin is redone. So I'm just gonna go back over the last few stitches because it'll lock in the old ones and the new ones, and then stitch, and then trim off both sets of tails, and then. You don't have to turn it inside out, but you do want to check to see how your edges went. And I'm happy. So once you're happy, trim it off. If you are unhappy, unpick it, stitch it again. The reason I like these scissors so much is because they open themselves up again. Because they're spring-loaded. And it's amazing. It means you don't hurt your hands as much while using them. Um, and I just wait till there's a 40% off sale at Spotlight. Or you get one of those 40% off any full price items. And I buy them then. And I got these ones. And you can go back through my videos and see how long I've had them. It's been a while. Alright. Exterior is mostly done. So we're going to set it aside. Move on to some lining pieces. Of which there are a few. So let's start with, if that's the gusset, let's do the gusset bits. So again, I'm going to hide the pattern pieces because they have the sizing on them. Zipper pocket, bottom lining. There we go. Tails to the back right sides together. So this is the navy thick waterproof canvas. 
I didn't want to take away from the exterior fabric because I think it's fabulous. So because of that, I chose plain. And by using the thick waterproof canvas, I also then didn't have to interface it. So it was a bit, it's quicker than just using like a plain, um, what's it called? Like a cotton canvas or a quilting cotton, rather than just buying plain. This is quicker and probably just as cost effective. So there's our gusset. Now if you want to, we can stitch these down. I think I will just for pretty sake. So I'm going to open them up and then stitch each side uh, just so it's pretty. You don't have to do this. It's just a little bit of an accent thing. You can just leave them unstitched. I just don't want to. I'm all about the little extras today, apparently. I regret nothing. Open it out, press it down. One. And two. Boom. Pop that aside. That bit's done. Next up, we have I'm missing some pieces. There they are. I took them out earlier when I was finding all the bits to interface. So let's do the this side. So for this side we need, and the other side just looks like little pieces. So for the other side we need the zipper pocket pieces. And I even cut the facing today. We're going to just not do a Tory pocket for the first time in a while. And that is for our main zipper. I just got to find where my piece is. So hold up. Maybe we'll do the other bits because I can find all of them. So let's do that. So this is the middle of the bottom of the other side. That way up. That is important. Then, so this is the slip side pocket. While I deal with all the pattern pieces. I've decided it will be easier. And the other slip pocket. So there's two slip pockets together. And then the sidey bits. All right, that's much easier. So this is, the main panel so we're just going to leave that there and then these ones get folded in half so you just want to pick which side you want up i think i want that one because i flukishly put a dragonfly right in the middle although you won't see half of it i suppose maybe i'll do this side there's a dragonfly near the top because the other slip pocket is going to go like this and then cover it so if i do the other side that, like that, then I'll still see this one. So this is just a design thing to think about if you're using your print on the inside. I could have also just as easily made all of these pockets just waterproof canvas, but I decided that wouldn't be pretty enough. So I'm folding that in half and just top stitching, and then I'm going to do the same for this one. Feel free to put a crease. Waterproof canvas does finger crease quite well. Right, trim this one off. And then just line it up on there like that. Take this one and line it up on top. And so then we will have slip pockets. I'm gonna grab some clips. And while I'm at it, I'm going to grab our side pieces that sit like this to create the whole thing. And I'm going to lay that right sides together and then clip all the layers. Like so. Then we're going to grab this side and do the same. So right, flip it over to right sides together. 
and clip. I'm clipping from bottom to top. You probably don't have to do that. Ta da! Oh, see how that pocket there is sitting up a little bit? I'm just going to open up the clips and get it to lay flat. Flat is important. You want a nice flat pocket. All right, now let's stitch up the sides. So I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. There's actually quite a few layers there. So just be conscious of that when adding your interfacing, especially if you're on a domestic. stitch. I'm going to peel these back and top stitch that down like so. After I get rid of those. So with top stitching you can crank it up. That's one. And then the other side. So this will help it to lay flat in the bag. This top stitching is important. You don't have to top stitch these, you do have to top stitch this. One second, I'm getting a phone call. Alrighty, I found it. Here we go. Uh, so I've got my zipper template just because it's a quick way to draw a rectangle. Center it on. Oh, wait, no, I want it on the back, don't I, so I can see what I'm doing. I knew that. I did. So you can actually, with these, you can actually cut that size for your um, thing if you wanted to. Right, let's find the center. I'm going to need it later anyway, so I might as well do it now. We're going to need center top to put the rest of it on and center bottom. Oh, then center of this bad boy from zipper section to zipper section. So I found the center not of the whole fabric but from the edge here to the edge there because then that will line up beautifully and we don't want to put it too high right because we're going to have the other bit so you don't want to have it too high just I'm going to put it there I'm sure the pattern has an actual measurement I'm going to eyeball it because that's apparently who I am Stitch, back stitch. I'm just going to do the long side like I normally would. And we're going to back stitch to lock it all in securely. And then I'm going to trim off that weirdo tail. And the other one that got stuck like so and the jump stitches <coughs> grab some scissors <coughs> cut the center just big enough so your scissors will get in there and then I'm still just gonna triangle out the corners like that and the other side and and then I'm going to finger press that down like so shove it through the hole it feels a lot different when it's tiny just so you all know and then I want to finger crease the edge so it stays where it's told if it doesn't want to stay where it's told you can either iron it or add clips. I will most likely add clips if it won't stay where it's told because I just paused the video and I don't really want to have to do it again. Uh, but if you're playing a lot at home you could definitely just iron it. Flat and glorious. 
I'm just fiddling. I'm grabbing these ends and just kind of wiggling them so that they sit beautiful. Right. Ta-da! Let's take our lining pieces and our zipper. So I'm not going to put the zipper pull on yet. And I'm just going to stitch this really close to the edge. Like this. So like an eighth of an inch from the edge. So it's on, but we won't see these stitches later. And then we're going to grab the other side, have it right sides up, and then the zipper right sides up. And I want this end to line up. So you can even do it from the back so that you're starting from the same end as before. So as long as it lines up, it's all good. And back stitch. So now we should have this with the right sides on the inside. Then it doesn't matter for me because all my stuff's the same, but if you've got a piece that you want to look at when you open the zipper, um, make sure you're putting the zipper pull on the right way to make sure that that will be at the back. And it, mine doesn't matter, so most of the time it won't matter. But if you're doing like a super cute peekaboo pocket and you've got like a really cool print, this, I always put my zippers like this. So you want to make sure that this piece has got your cool stuff so when you open it, that's what you'll see. So then we're going to just finger press that over and it might be a bit stubborn because it is such a small seam allowance but still try and do it anyway, it will help. You can also stick it down if that's going to help too. And then we're going to have that with the zipper facing the way I want. Overlay this and just lay it on top and I'll fix it properly in a second. So I'm just kind of doing it roughly now and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to actually line up the zipper in the middle of the hole. So this is not what we want. It needs to shift just a little bit that way. Like that, so that it's in the middle. Flip that out of the way. And then we're going to top stitch around that. And I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going to come back and go through those first stitches. Now if you're using nylon zip it's fine to stitch over the zipper tape but if you're using a metal zipper please do not do what I just did you will snap a needle straight off the bat so again we want to make sure that all that seam under there is pointing down line this up over the edge as best and as central as we can needle down pivot up over we go Coming back to the start, we want to go through those stitches and then back stitch. You just want a few, you don't want a lot because we don't want to draw our attention to that bit. Trim off the tails and so now we've got that and that. So we're going to let this fall down and you'll notice that they are different sizes, that is fine. We are just going to stitch the sides and back stitch and then stitch down to where the shortest piece is and then back stitch. We're going to trim them up even in a minute. You can pre-cut them so that they'll be even if you want to, uh, but to be honest it takes more concentration and it is much easier to do it this way. Back stitch. And then we just grab some scissors and even them off. Like that, and that goes in a bit. Alright, so that's the second side. I also need to do this bit. I did pre clip it while I was on a phone call. Uh, so we're just going to stitch around the edge. Oh, that sounded interesting. Yeah, that's alright. We're just going to go around and back stitch. Put those back in the coffin. I actually managed 
managed to grab its uh, lid, which we're going to need them again in a minute anyway. Zigzag scissors again. So we're just going to trim, especially the curve. If you don't want to trim all of it with your zigzag scissors because they do happen to hurt your hand, just make sure you use them on this curvy part and then you can switch back to straight scissors there if you want to. Now this is going to suck to turn through because I've already got this on. But a little tip is to heat it up. So I'm actually going to do this off camera. I'm going to go iron this and it'll make it soft and pliable. And then I'm going to use my turning stick and just shove it through. So I'll be back once that's done. All right, let's top stitch that. I'm going to go up to a top stitch length. Stitch, back stitch. And move that because I'm about to hit it. Go. And backstitch. Alright, then I can pop that aside too. Let's go on to our zipper section. So I've got my zipper here. We're just going to crack it a little bit and pull down the sides and tack them in place. So you just pull it down, it'll make like a weird little bubble, but we won't see it, so don't be too stressed about it. I'm also going to go back to a joining stitch length because the stitches are shorter and it'll make it easier. And then the stitch and back stitch really close to the edge of the zipper tape so that we won't see the stitches. They're just like a temporary hole. So like that. And then we're going to match the other side so that the zip's even. Oop. Just like that, my stuff came undone. Rethread that. Stitch on and back. You don't have to do a lot of stitches, it's just to hold it in place for like a little while. So now, we're going to flip all of these pieces over to the back. And I believe I've got a matching set. So see how the wings line up? So we want to fold that over. And then we're going to pick one of the ends and put double-sided tape on all of it. Now I am starting to run low on double-sided tape on this roll, but I'm pretty sure we'll get through this bit. Um, but if you have little rolls like this and you don't want to use it because it won't make it all the way, keep it for little bits like this. Now for the lining it doesn't matter which end I use, uh, but for the exterior I want to have it so it's going to match. So see how the, like obviously we'll have the zipper tape, but I still like it when it matches. So that's why we're doing this, like this. And then I'm just going to fold it under so that they're all even. So even if you cut them crooked, this will be the, like, uneven, sorry, not crooked. This will be the time to get it all even. So I'm just, I'm using the ruler on the machine because it's easier. Um, if you don't have one of these, maybe do it at your cutting table just so that you can watch them all be even. Like so. Alright, so now we've got that and like this. So what I want, and I'm going to show you how you work this out. We're going to separate it. Don't freak out, you'll be fine. So I want this this is how I want my zipper to be, right? So the zipper's in the middle of the dragonfly. Whichever way you want the dragonfly to be, that's fine. I actually need them this way though, because the, the folded edge needs to be to the edge we haven't stitched. So this is the way the dragonfly will be. So now we take it, we want it on this edge. So we're gonna flip it over and join it there. I'm going to use a bunch of clips to hold it in place 
Um, the more clips you use as well, the less likely it is to shift and then you won't get puckering in your zipper. So lots of clips is always good, especially if you're using like a stretchy vinyl or something. And then we stop clipping it at the end there. And then so while we're on the roll, we're going to flip this one over and do the same thing. So we want it all to line up along here. Now if you've got a lining that you want the same thing to happen, all lined up like I just did, but I'm good. So we're going to just put the folded edge needs to perfectly match up with the other folded edge. You don't want one hanging over further than the other. And if you did do this crooked, now's when it'll show up because they'll be uneven at the raw edge. It is important to do it that way. So I always start matching up the folded edge because that's going to be like our finished bit. The other end we're going to stitch across so it won't matter so much. Right, add all of the clips in like so. And then I'm going to stitch here and then along the raw end. I'm still on a joining stitch length of two and a half. So I don't want to stitch off the fabric. That's pretty important to get it to be nice and neat. I also probably should have put the waterproof canvas underneath because then the feed dogs pull it nice and evenly. And then across the end like so. So I can start from the raw edge again by flipping it over and having the other piece on top. The downside to that is my clips are backwards and therefore hard to pull off while I'm sewing. And one more stitch and then across the end. I'm going to trim off all these oops, tails. We don't want the tails hanging out. They'll wreck the prettiness. And then we're going to take some scissors and we're going to cut through the zipper and everything. You want to cut out the bulk in that corner so that we get more of a nicer edge. If you leave it in, it'll just be very rounded. I mean, this will still be rounded, just not as much. All right, and so then we're going to come take more clips and we're going to line up the nice folded edge and the raw edges and we're going to clip it together so that when we stitch it they're lined up because usually the lining will try and pull away and not be awesome and they'll try and sit so that they're crooked and we don't want that we want them to sit so they're beautiful right so that they're matching on both sides and we're going to do both so again, I'm going to fold this, I'm going to get rid of that tail so it gets hidden. Then I'm going to fold it back, put a clip, and then work my way along. So you want to poke out that edge as well. You kind of want to pull on the zipper to make it come out. And then some more clips, again, to line up the edge of the lining in the exterior. Now depending on what fabric you use this will either be super tricky or super easy. It just it's temperamental. It could go either way. So I'm going to start at this raw edge here. I'm going to stitch and back stitch just to lock in our stitches and I'm stitching really really close to that edge. We won't see this but we're just doing it so that we won't have to deal with the edges moving. So if we stitch them together then they can't go any further. Then I'm going to top stitch along here and then when we get to that raw end we're going to go across there as well. So we're stitching all the sides. The whole thing should now be enclosed and encased and beautiful. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to start at this end this time. You also want to have right sides facing up because that's the stitches you're going to see. You won't really see the underneath. 
But it is important to do, so it looks fabulous. I also do the raw edge first because it gets rid of the clips. It makes it a little bit easier. And stitch. So my edges are still a bit curved. They're just not as bad as if I didn't do that. All right. Last piece we haven't touched yet are the tops. Now I did the exterior fabric here as well because I wanted to poke out and be cool. You don't have to do that. Oh, come on, snips. I'm finding the center because we did that on the other pieces. And that's how we're going to line everything up. So now we're going to take one of our bits and we're going to take the one with the zipper first and I'll show you why. We want the zippers closing the same way, or at least that's what I like. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fold this in half and we're going to put a clip there as opposed to cut it. And then we're going to line that clip up in the center like so. We're going to clip down our little zipper thing we just made. Yes, I just did call it a thing like so. And then we're going to grab one of our other pieces and put it right sides down and sandwich everything in. That should all line up beautifully. You just want to attach the third one. You can also start in the middle and line it up that way. So now we've got one. Let's do the second one at the same time. So I haven't found the center of this yet. Let's do that now. And let's do the bottom now as well because we're going to need it when we join it all together. Right. And it's easier to do it now. So this one will look like it's going the opposite way, which I suppose it is. Fold it over. Clip it down. Add clips along this part. You can do all three layers at once, but if you've watched any of my videos, we all know how I feel about that never works out quickly. Right, so the next step we want to do is we're going to take this tail and we're going to pull it back and we're going to clip it to its own zipper. And that's going to hold it so we don't accidentally stitch it because that is also important. We don't want to stitch this. So I just use a clip to kind of hold it in place. Done. Now let's stitch across the top here. We're going to stitch and we're going to back stitch. And then we're going to go over all the layers, pulling off the clips as we go. And this is why I have the clips facing up. And then we can chain stitch the next piece, stitch and back stitch. Over we go. I'm going to trim that one off now so it's not in the way. And I'm going to run out of bobbin thread. I can hear it. It's coming. Okay. Done. Now if you want to, we can stitch that down. Um, you can stitch along there if you want. I'm not going to. I don't always like the way that that looks, so I'm just going to skip that. So, we're going to take our gusset we did ages ago, find the center of it as well, because again, center of everything is the easiest way to make any bag. Okay? And then, we're going to line up this center with the other center. Take some clips. Now this has got some thickness to it, so I am actually probably going to use quite a lot of clips. So we're going to come up, do the top edge, we're going to make sure that this bit points down and clip it in place so it just stays there. We're just going down and around the curve. So 
like that. And then let's come up and do the other side as well. So we're going to start at the top, work our way down, make sure that this is pointing down. Again, if you wanted to, you could have stitched it, top stitch underneath. Some people like to, some people don't. I do both, to be honest. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Feel, it depends on if I feel like it needs it or not. Alright, clipped in place. Actually, I'm going to need them. I'll put that there. Now, we're going to stitch around the edge, keeping an eye on our bobbin thread because I know it's going to finish soon. It's got like a tinny sound, and that's how I know it's nearly empty. Trying to avoid puckerings in the corner. Uh, waterproof canvas is not at all flexible. It's its main weakness in my opinion. And because of that, it very easily puckers in corners when I don't want it to. I'm not even going to try and zigzag scissor through it. I am just going to grab my vinyl scissors and trim it down that way. Oh, it's got like 10 layers. It's got a lot. Because all of the, the folded bits and everything are all joined down there. So I'm going to grab the other side and attach it. Now I am going to actually leave the base of this open so that we can turn the bag through there because it'll be easier. All right, so we just want to line it up and then not put clips there so you remember. So I'm going to go up to the top edge, have the clips facing the gusset piece and work our way along. And then do the other side. Oops, wrong way. Always put the clips on the right way. I promise it'll help out in the long run. Oh, all right. For anyone curious. 
curious, I really do make these noises when I'm not recording. I actually forget, and that's why I was making them. So I was concentrating on what I'm doing instead of the fact that I am in fact recording. It happens. All right, let's trim off this excess. You don't have to use these exact scissors, but I love them. And why buy something if you're not gonna play with it? Sides out. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just to stitch it to the bag. You'll also notice I have not put my um, magnet in, that is a deliberate thing because oh, I actually probably had the marking on the thing, I just didn't look. Not even gonna lie, didn't look. So, this is the front, which means this one where the magnet is not. So the magnet's here. So on the opposite side, we're going to add that in the middle, and I'm going to clip it in place. With three clips for good measure, right? Make sure it doesn't move. Then, so if this is the front of the back, right? I want the zipper to close over here. So that is the way I'm going to shove in the insert. Like that. Also, this, come undone, we're going to reattach that because I don't want it to get in my way. Excellent. So then we're going to match up the corners. And I always like to do the short edges first. And you want your clips facing the inside, like this, right? Then we're going to go to the other end. We're going to match up these ends because they are meant to match. That is kind of the point. And short ones are just quicker, and I like to do the quick edges, I guess. You feel accomplished if you've um, done that end. And so then we're going to push down this zipper thing that we just made earlier. So it's out of the way. And then if you pull on the bag, it should all just line up. Now I say should because if you've cut it incorrectly it won't or if you're using stretchy vinyl it might look like it won't. There's a couple of reasons why it might not match up but I can see that that did. So now we're going to do the other side and I like to do this in my lap because me doing it like this hurts my arms. I don't have that kind of stamina, stamina in my arm strength so I just don't bother trying. So I'm making sure the edge, the raw edges are matching up beautifully, which they are, and adding a whole lot of clips. The other way you could have done that is to found the, find the center, like I always say, find the center and match it up that way. A little bit of a pucker going on here. I think it's just the way it's sitting. But more clips usually fix that. See? Alright, lift up your needle so you can slide the bag under. And then you can start from wherever feels comfortable. So just remove one clip and then start from there. Stitch, back stitch. I'm going to pull this top bit out of the way. I'm going to keep my arm tucked in so that I don't damage it again like I did last time. And then we're just going to rotate the bag around. Needle down, and then we're going to pivot for the end. Oops. And then we're going to pivot again. We're going slow because the bag's trying to be awkward. We don't like that. Now I'm coming up to the thick bit here. It's not sounding as tinny anymore. I wonder what's going on. I thought I'd run out of bobbin thread by now, and I just haven't, which is good, but also confusing because I totally thought I was going to. Anyway, I'm dropping clips everywhere because they're being pulled off the bag 
by the machine. But that's okay. I'll pick them up later. Give me your eye. And then we're going to stitch and then back stitch when we go back to the start. And then you want to check to make sure that everything has been got, right? Make sure that nothing slipped that you weren't paying attention to. That is important. And then, now if you're on a domestic, you definitely want to do this. You just want to cut those corners out where all the bulk is. Uh, so when we top stitch, it'll be pretty. Chuck that in the bin. Then grab your lining. And then the whole bottom section's open. So stick your hand in, grab a corner and push it in. You basically want it to be a puppet. I love making it a puppet. This one kind of looks like it wants to speak to me. It looks like one of those things off um, the Muppets. But anyway, getting sidetracked. I do love the Muppets. The Muppet show was fabulous. All right, so I'm just gently easing it through and I'm rotating the bag because I want to do all sides evenly so that it doesn't damage anything. So you can just rotate it around and around and around. And then boom. So the fact that it's through is fine. Now we're just going to push all of the main body out. Push, push, push like so and then we're gonna we're not gonna shove it in we're going to unzip the zipper pocket grab the opening we just shoved the bag through and pull it through the zipper pocket so we can stitch it shut and this just makes the inside neater um, and then our closures inside the zipper pocket which nobody ever checks if you're not a sewer you don't know to check there so nobody will see your stitches Okay, so now that I've pulled it out, line it up, stitch, back stitch. Line it up as you go. And stitch and back stitch. Now before we turn it through, again with the zigzag scissors, and the reason we're cutting this off is because it will sit nicer in the bottom of the bag if there's less excess to fight against. In the bin, shove the lining in, take the zipper pocket, and then I just use my fingers and just fold under the raw edge, pull tight, and then pinch it. And then you can just sew it shut. Now, if that looks too complicated, please use pins or needle, uh, not pins, these ones. Sometimes plain actually gives the bag more. If I have done a crazy inside, oh, I've missed a bit. If I have done a crazy inside, the outside wouldn't be as effective. As effective. Besides, even though I see there's the end of the bobbin, I knew it was coming. I heard it. It just tricked me and lasted longer than I thought. Okay, tuck that in. Zip it up. You can now let go of the zipper tape. It can just flow freely. And so now what I want to do is tuck under the lining from the exterior and clip it in place. Now in a perfect world, I want the clips on the outside like this. We're gonna have this just sitting up and stitch it so it sits up because it's gonna go over the bag. So even if you don't wanna zip it up, you can at least magnetically snap it up. Do, do, do. 
You want to roll this out so that we're right on the edge. that out of my way for a minute. It won't be able to stay there while we sew. Now I'm going to do what looks complex but it's not really. I'm just going to squish the bag. But if you don't want to do what I'm about to do, just turn the bag inside out. It'll have the same effect. So what I want to do is I'm basically going to squish it down so that I'm top stitching from the outside. But first we need a bobbin. Alrighty, new bobbin is in. I like doing top stitching with a full bobbin, makes me happy. Now if you've got a cylinder arm, you could always just pop it in. You can stitch it from the other way, uh, or you can do this. So I'm just going to squish it down, essentially. Make sure I don't knock all of them, because that would suck. Take that off. I'm going to go up to my decorative stitch length of four. And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. And this is basically so I don't have to turn the bag inside out. Uh, but you definitely could. You could stitch it from the other way too. If your top stitching is beautiful, you can top stitch it from the inside of the bag. And just your bobbin will be on the outside. But I've decided I'm doing it this way. And once you get started, it's actually not that tricky. Needle down, pop them down and away. Swing it around. through two extra stitches and then back stitch. All right, then trim off the tails. Ah, like so. Then I'm actually going to push the lining all the way into the bag properly. I've only got a couple of bits to go. So now I want to put my zipper pull on because the top stitching is done and I always find it easier to put the zipper on last. I just do. So, line it up, squish it on. Now the important part is that this all lines up because uh, we can always change the end of the zipper but it does line up lovely. Look at that. So, zipper end tiny screw, screwdriver. I use an electric one because I think it's fabulous. You of course do not have to do that. So what I just did there, I didn't even explain that, is I folded the zipper over and over so that it's nice and skinny there. And then I'm just gonna shove all of that mess into the zipper. Minus that bit, because it's sticking out, I don't like it. All right. Shove it all the way in as far as it'll go. That is what we are attempting to do. Like so. The zip won't go up any further. So now we want to grab our zipper screw. Uh, if you ever lose all your screws, let me know and I can add extras into your next order because they always send me really random amounts of screws. And so now your zipper ends on. So now your zipper can't come off. Fabulous. 
We've got two more bits and we're done. So first bit is going to be, we've got to add this on, and then we'll add our handle on last. So we require our hole punch, which you can't really see. Hold on. There we go. So I want it to sit like this. And this is actually going to have, because if I sit it all the way up there, it's going to look weird. So I want to sit it so it's basically flush without pulling. So like that. So if we line that up, grab my pen. I am going to put my magnet. I'm just lining it up so it's central to everything. Yeah, that's where I'm going to do it. Like that, and then we're going to take these out. You can also grab your other one, which is where all the other bits are. So this set comes with one top and two bottoms. We want to go through the hole because that bit's going to attach there. Always double check because it's always harder to pull it apart. All right, that's the wrong bit. Right, squish magnets together. It's fabulous. And then we're going to take these out finished with these ones so I can pop those over out of the way. I'll put them away properly in a minute. We're going to put our hole punch back in and then the other one is going to have the 10 mil rivet dies. Like so. So now we just need our Wrap. And I'm going to be using these because I love them and they make my life easy. Uh, so these are rivet placement templates and I really do. I just find them easy. I like them. So I'm going to line it up, draw my hole, one, two, three, four, five, draw my other hole. So this is a good way to get them even without having to line them up in the machine. And then there. Get rid of that. And then I can just punch all the holes. So there's one and two. And which side did I draw on? Three and four. this one. Now I want my raw edge to be on the inside like this. So I'm just going to stub this through there and there. Put the cap on and just click it into place. And then I hang this off the edge because it really is easier. And then I'm just going to squish. So that way the raw edge is in here. If you wanted to, you could also add and tuck that in the bag. You can also add uh, strap ends to these if you want them to be super cute. I mean, you can add as much hardware as you want. We can go nuts, really. I might do a bag one day with like every bit of hardware I can think of. It won't look bad. I won't make it look tacky, but it's just to prove a point, really. So now, see the that? See how the bottom's being weird? What we need to do is we need to roll that edge onto the edge like this and then Tory squish it which as someone very graciously pointed out I am manhandling it into submission so that it does the curves I want it to which is a very good point so we're going to just grab it squish it grab it squish it so we do that the whole way along the bag to make it sit nicely it's like a final thing if you can't do this you can also grab your dropping everything now. You can grab your leather tools and squish the edges. 
Um, it depends on what vinyl you've used as to how much it doesn't want to comply. So right here where it's all thick, I can grab these, pinch it right on the edge, and I use two hands and squish it. And what that will do is it will create the seam or the crease just like the other one. So you can go along and do that all the way along, wherever you feel it needs to be. And then that way, see how now, oh, hold on, see how now it's going to sit flush, whereas I haven't done the other side and it's still kind of rolled out. So this is what happens, what, this is what happens to all bags and then you just have to fix it. It's like the final step that you really shouldn't skip because it makes the bag beautiful. All right, so I believe that's done now. I really like the fabric choice. It's all dark and mysterious. It also would look super cute with rainbow hardware as an, alter an alternative. Um, but yeah, that's the bag, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.